when you've been where I've been, it's hard to be shown something new. Uh, this is big because Stipe is so good. But at the end of the day, I've been here time and time again. So I'm ready to go. How much different? I mean, you fought the best in the world in two weight classes. How much different is it competing and fighting a heavyweight? It's a lot easier because I don't have to manage the weight. I feel good. I feel fresh. I mean, I just got done working out a little bit ago because now I train like I'm fighting at 205. Heavyweights don't train like that. I know now that I wasn't training as hard as I should have when I was a heavyweight because I know I've put in more work leading up to this one. What about the feel of the opponent? I mean, when we break it down, we say power, we say strength, you know what I mean? Will it translate up to heavyweight? Yeah. How much different is that going in with a heavyweight? It's going to be different. The guy's good. The guy hits hard. But I feel like we have prepared for everything he can bring to the table. Man, this dude's a good champion. He is. And I love Francis Ngannou. I think he's a great guy. But if I spent 22 minutes on top of him, I would have gotten four or five submissions and found a way to get some TKO stoppages. How much do you wear right now? About 245. I was going to go down about 230, and my manager, Bob, and coach, and Javier, they were like, you know, early I was struggling with the movement. I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not moving as well. I'm heavy. I feel, I feel slow. But then as camp started going on, I felt better, and I was like, I'm still going to get down to 230. And they're like, no. When you fought Bigfoot Silva, you were 247. And they were like, when you fought Barnett, you were 239. They're like, you don't have to force the weight down. Fight where you are. You're moving great. You're fast. So we stayed up a little bit. We still have another episode of Ultimate Fighter to air tonight. But yeah. everyone has given you a growing praise as a coach. Uh, just tell us about that experience, what it meant to you to mentor those guys. Because yeah. you did an amazing job. The Ultimate Fighter was great. All the kids were great. We got a lot of them fighting this weekend. It just showed, you know, I've been coaching for a really long time. And it showed in the process and in the approach. It was great, man. I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. How about the hockey? The hockey might have been the worst thing in the world <laughs> that I've ever experienced. I mean, but if there was ever a time Stipe Miocic should have beat me, it was in. And I got the job done. Now we get to do something that I'm actually good at. Let's see how he fares on that surface. He's like, you know, some motors hat on for a second. What's special about this one? It's a true super fight, right? You, people talk about super fights and they say just because two champions are fighting, it's a super fight. That's not necessarily true. It's the best of the best warrants the title super fight. This guy has done things that no other heavyweight has ever been able to do. And I've defended that light heavyweight title three times. We have to. And then you get a guy in me that's going up away, back in the weight class that he started in. So it's almost like my career's coming full circle. When I was in the heavyweight division, Stipe and I were in the heavyweight division at the same time. I was ranked number two in the world before I went down. He was still a prospect. So I've lived in that division for a long time. Doesn't fear me. There is no part of me that's afraid of Stipe Miocic. And in, in terms of styles, the fact that he does a lot of his best work inside works to my advantage. Why do you think heavyweights have had such a hard time with Stipe trying to you know, get the knock on him and finish him? Why watch him in some of he's fought some, He's fought some tough guys, but um, Fabricio Verdum, I don't know what he was doing. He decided to run, he, he ran right into Stipe's fist. Stipe might have still won that fight. Alistair Overeem, I don't know what he was doing. He heard him and he thought he tapped. Uh, third match with Dos Santos, I, I, I think Cain Velasquez may have turned Junior into a zombie. He's a walking zombie nowadays. I love the guy, but he is. And uh, Francis Ngannou can't wrestle. So, this will be the first time he's fighting somebody that can do everything. He hasn't really fought a wrestler. Last question. I was going to say, he hasn't really fought a wrestler. You know, your, your wrestling is amazing, but how much confidence does that give you knowing that his opponents have to be good wrestlers? Nobody's really, nobody's really pushed him in that area. I'm not anticipating that it's going to be easy to take him down. I just know that the longer I can make us grapple, the better the odds are for me. Guys, i tell you this. There are odds makers for a reason. They instilled me as the underdog, and it's great. Stipe Miocic is in a completely different situation. Last time he got disrespected. I feel I'm getting disrespected. Stipe Miocic is fighting a guy that he's never seen anything like this. There's odds for a reason. But know that those odds and all that money that they've bet on him, it's tied to one outcome. The only way he can win is to knock me out. 
There is no other way he beats me. If he didn't finish Ngannou on the ground, he is not finishing me on the ground. And if we fight for 25 minutes, there is no way he gets his hand raised. So all the money that people are betting know that it's tied to one outcome. Because that's the only way he wins the fight. DC, really quickly. Can you tell us about those shoes? Oh, my wrestling shoes. Yeah. Hey, my guy Jacob Casper, he gave me uh he gave me uh wrestling shoes because you know Jake's a, a good a, a training partner that I've gotten. Two-time All-American heavyweight from Duke University. He came and he's trained with me these last two fights and he's been a godsend, man. He's one of the strongest people that I've ever grabbed. And he got me custom wrestling shoes made. They say Cormier, UFC 226. On the opposite side, it says and new. With a picture of me in the octagon. And on this side is the championship belt. And it says reigning, defending, and the undisputed champion. So it takes a smart guy, and Jake's a smart guy, he went to Duke. He went and made these special for me. They hold it. I wanted to share them with you guys today. That's why I won. So hey, thank you guys. I appreciate you guys all for coming out. As always, get ready for Saturday because I get to make history. Alright? Later guys. Thanks.